podcast. I'm Melissa. Um, I'm a senior in Course 15, which is management. Uh, <laughs> Where are you from? Okay, I'm from Long Island, New York, originally. Oh. I live in Simmons on campus. Um, <clears throat> see, some things I do, I play violin in Chamber Music Society on campus. Um, I'm a student alumni association. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an orientation leader, associate advisor, tour guide, all that stuff. Um, yeah. A tour guide? I am. Do, yeah. you, do you talk louder when you're a tour guide? I do. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> all right. Hi, I'm Gonzo. You know who I am. Um, I am a senior somehow. Uh, I study 6-2, which is electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, I'm from a small town of Lufkin, Texas. Uh, so a first person from there to come to MIT. Uh, so, you know, let's go, Lufkin Panthers. Um, yeah, I do a lot of things on campus. Uh, as you can tell from my shirt, I'm in Kappa Sigma, one of, one of, our, one of the 27 member fraternities. Uh, I, uh, I do this. <laughs> That's one, another thing I do. Um, I'm on the inter inter fraternity Council. I do stuff just, just everywhere. Oh, Hack MIT, I was on the organizing committee for that. And yeah, it's, um, I'm, all, I'm all over the place. But yeah, we have we have some exciting stuff today that we're gonna talk <laughs> about. So as you can probably tell, huh? Why are there two seniors but no freshmen? Well, none of the freshmen <laughs> we emailed replied to us. So we're gonna try to get some for the next podcast. Uh, maybe to talk more about their uh, first few weeks here at Nerd Camp. Yep. Um. Just, hey, can you tilt the camera down? Can you get a, our our master, our producer? <laughs> yeah, t tilt down. Hello. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Julia. Um, I don't go to nerd camp, did you call it? Nerd camp. Don't go to nerd camp. Yeah, it's like summer um, camp, but for nerds. I go to art camp across the river at Emerson. <laughs> um, and let's get back to the podcast. These past few summers, I've actually been interning at Microsoft, um, the small little tech company started by Bill oh my Gates. God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> With the mission to put a computer in every house and every home. Um, and yeah, I decided to intern there again last summer and did a decent job. And so they gave me a return offer and yesterday I actually signed it. So now I know what I'm doing after graduation, which is great. Cause now I can just kind of hang out, relax and focus on passing biology, which apparently I need to graduate from this place. Um, but yeah, yesterday we were just all together with my parents, uh, some close friends on campus and, um, at the Muddy, which is uh, a pub on campus and it was pretty wholesome. Um, yeah, signing the offer. I was like reading the first sentence out of my dad was like, blah, 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 and <laughs> just sign it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So last year I was a really shitty orientation leader, I think. <laughs> uh, but this year I tried to be better. I got a lot of, a lot more retention this year, which is good. And I think it's really lame, but so one, one day I was walking and then I saw one of my frosh and then she like waved at me and she was like super happy to see me. I was like, oh, that kind of warmed my cold heart. I was like, oh my God, she actually cares. That's not <laughs> lame. That's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying Course 15s have cold hearts? No. <laughs> but you, okay, but Melissa does, so. Yeah. Uh, that's sweet. Yeah, the, it was, my group was weird this year. They didn't want to <laughs> talk at first. Um, but then like after our advising meeting with our advisor, they kind of cornered me in a room and they were like, so tell us about the parties. And I was, and they were like, tell us everything. And I'm like, okay, fine. And so once we started talking about the actual parts of MIT, mm -hmm. they were like, oh, they were a lot like more approachable. Cool. Did you feel like, did you like orientation round two? Okay. Yeah. I feel like they really improved it this year. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. yeah. Chelsea and yeah. Yeah, Taylor Rock. So this podcast was originally started by somebody named Cynthia, I think, um, which is funny because that's my mom's name. And as she graduated and the podcast kind of died with her. Um, so then my freshman summer, I was, I was helping photograph commencement and Stephanie, who's again, behind this <laughs> camera, who doesn't want to be on the camera. Um, she was like, Hey, do you want to bring the podcast back to life? You seem like you like to talk to people. And <laughs> I was like, sure. <laughs> Not knowing what I was getting myself into. So we just like brought it back. Um, but we always emailed out asking like, Hey, if you're interested in joining, let us know. And <laughs> Melissa was the only person. So yeah. she, we, <laughs> so we were like, yes, please come. Come hang out. So. Yeah, I listened to some of them. Like, I listened to some of them when Cynthia was doing it, and then I kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. Then I don't know why. I, like, started listening to it again. And then I was like, it seems really cool. 
Um, so I emailed them. And yeah. <laughs> Now we're going to try, start trying to find people to take over because we graduate. Yeah. We're out of here. We're in Seattle. So <laughs> how about how about the job yeah. stuff? So have you, uh, have you, how's the job search and stuff going for you? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking for a job right now. So see how that goes. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you go to career fair? I did briefly. Briefly? Yeah. So you, I mean, I feel like career fair is mostly course six. They did a lot better job about it this year, though. There were so many more non-core six companies. Yeah, but I think some companies also didn't show up. I Wait, really? Yeah, I heard. Oh, yeah, Texas Department of Transportation didn't show up. <laughs> like I heard SpaceX didn't show up. Not that it applies to me, but like I heard uh -huh. they didn't show up because it was too expensive or whatever. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I guess we're both like transitioning out and graduating. Um, we were supposed to bring a freshman on <laughs> who's like transitioning into MIT, but don't currently have that. Yeah, they're all they're all studying for their eight oh one exam tonight, um, which is for freshman physics. If you're not aware, uh, so we'll see. Maybe they'll remember how to do friction <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I got to see in physics. I was done with that class when oh I was God. done with it. But, but yeah, I don't know. It's weird senior year. Mm. I still it still feels I still feel like a freshman at some time. So mm. except no. now I can legally purchase alcohol. <laughs> Okay, I feel like you can see the difference between freshmen and seniors, though. They're, like, upperclassmen. Yeah. You just look at them, and if, the, <laughs> if their smiles aren't as prevalent, then you know. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, what was your kind of, like, biggest, uh, have you feel, have, do you feel like you've, like, changed a lot through MIT when you came here, or? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like I'm pretty different from when I first came in. Mm -hmm. At least, like, I guess personality-wise, also, I, like... I, mean, I guess I'm still not like the most talkative, but I used to be like super quiet, you know, like. But now you're on a podcast. I know, right? So, yeah, um, I think it's been like a really big like growth experience in terms of like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like my personality, but also just like, I guess going through MIT, like because it's such like a hard experience, like being able to make it out of that hopefully is like, it really changes you. Yeah, yeah. and soon, and then hopefully soon get our diplomas. Hopefully together. Not on Killian. No, yeah, I don't on Killian. God. So for those who aren't aware, um, our administration, which is lovely and amazing, um, decided to change the commencement uh, without telling any of us. So we're in the process of figuring that out. And this better stay in the podcast. Uh, yeah, I guess. So I guess for me, MIT has like really taught me how to channel my energy, which is limitless. Um, uh, into like actually like enforcing some form of change like in the things I work on which is like cool mm -hmm. um, personality wise pretty they're pretty much the same um, except like I'm a much better arguer I feel like than I a debater than I was before it's like when you're here you meet so many people from all over and you just really like you, you really learn how to form perspective behind your arguments and stuff that was huge gained a lot of weight here like that's horrible <laughs> Like, IHTFP, I, like, God, so I can't wait to graduate and, like, be in, live in a normal environment and, like, lose it all, so that'll be exciting. Mm. Um, it's definitely been one of the biggest transitions. <laughs> Why can't you lose it now? <laughs> because I'm so busy with classes all the freaking time, and, like, I'm, I mean, I'm in ethics classes that where the professor assigns, like, 130 pages of reading a week. Uh, I'm in the Hack MIT committee. Is and that, Hack MIT over? No, but we still have the high school hackathon that oh. we organize, apparently. And some for some reason I agreed to stay on for that. Ugh. So you know, I started lifting recently. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Or this summer? Yeah. What's your <laughs> what's your relevant, what's your but... what's your bench? Uh, <laughs> all right, I don't really do bench that much. You but just do squat. Yeah, yeah, I do like the like the back squat thingy. Mm -hmm. So currently I'm on like it's like twenty five on each side. Okay. Which I don't know what that adds up to. I guess it's like ninety. Uh, fifty-four. Yeah, ninety. Ninety. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get back into that. Yeah. It was, with, me now that like I'm beginning to return to a normal sleeping schedule, but, it's um. I don't know. It'll be, it'll be weird to transition from like the hustle bustle of MIT, to the normal nine to five, like at Microsoft and in, in Seattle. Like it's, just, it'll be very. I feel like easier. <laughs> <laughs> but like, is that better? Do you like that nine to five? I like MIT a lot. I'm like not really 
it's I don't I, I know I'll come back for sure to probably do grad school and stuff it's just right now I need a break mm. um, but I feel like I'll find some ways ways to keep myself busy yeah. when I'm out there plus also like the company supports like side hustles and maybe I'll join a blockchain startup or two for the meme <laughs> 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 though blockchain is still ridiculous in my opinion but <laughs> how about you are you are you gonna miss the crazy pace of MIT Okay, so this summer I basically did nothing outside of well, not that's the wrong, that's false, but I had a very strict nine to five this summer. Mm-hmm. Basically, like people would literally ditch out at like four thirty, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, but yeah, like I don't know. I guess it was chill, but I feel like if I did that for like a whole year, I'd probably go crazy. Yeah, it, that's what I'm kind of yeah. worried about. Like yeah. after three months, I was just like, okay, I'm ready to yeah, be back to yeah. MIT. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's 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 like. What's it? What's what's it called when you look back on something that's actually a pretty like uh, horrifyingly busy experience? Like it's 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 most people would view it as not healthy, but I think like there's just some Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm <laughs> syndrome, yeah. Except it's the Bieber syndrome. It's um, you you love the MIT grind, so we'll see. Maybe maybe I'll get tired of it, quit, and come back. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but yeah. You, you, you didn't do anything outside of work for fun? Okay, that's why I started lifting. Because <laughs> 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 my friend is on a sailing team, and they have, like, summer workouts or whatever. Um, and she was like, I don't want to lift alone. So I was like, cool, I'll try something new. So I started lifting, and then I got hooked. You know? Nice. Yeah. It's exciting. Pretty soon I'll see you chugging protein powder oh with eggs. <laughs> Be like um, Rocky. Oh, yeah. So, actually, update. I might get my pirate certificate. Ooh. So, I'm taking sailing now, uh, which is super fun. We had, we had, we had, we, we finally got our licenses t- t- today. So, now I can, like, take people on dates and stuff on sailing. Um, <laughs> but the, the boat almost capsized over. So, pretty much the way it works is, like, you're going into the water and the wind is pushing right into the sail. Cause, and that's how you get propelled. Um, but the way the the Charles works is there's a lot more dynamics because of how constricted the river is. So you, you feel the forces and not only the wind, but the water. And so there were points today where the boat literally almost tipped over. And the only thing you can do is just like lean off the boat and just like hope that you can counterbalance it. And so it's, it's pretty exciting. I don't know. It brings like thrill to my life <laughs> <laughs> that you don't get otherwise from lecture. <laughs> So yeah, th- after that, all I, need to, all I need to do is take archery, and then I get my pirate certificate, and then I'm out of here, because I'm not here for a diploma. I'm just here for the pirate certificate. <laughs> Are you getting yours? No. Um, okay, so I like kind of failed the boating test freshman year. How do you fail the boating test? All right, listen. So you just I'm... have to float. <laughs> all right, so I was a super naive freshman also, right? So, because I did the swim test, and you know how everybody like just like treads water together? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then I like, I kind of died right after like five minutes. <laughs> So I got out, and the person was like, oh, did you, like, pass the voting test? And I was like, no. <laughs> Why did you say no? Like, I don't know, okay? But I said no, and then now looking back, I'm like, why did I say no? Like, <laughs> I can you swim. You can take it again. We can throw you in the Charles, see how you last. No, but, okay, I heard you have to swim again, and then oh, tread water. that's fine. You just float across. Okay, floating is not that easy. <laughs> well, you've been lifting, so it should work out. Right. <laughs> Ten minutes? Um. For ten mm-hmm. minutes, yeah. You just kick your legs. Sh- okay. Well, we'll see. we'll see. At the institute, we don't teach you how to float, apparently, um, as you can tell from Melissa. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because you can just doggy paddle across the swim test, right? Do you think you learn how to swim after MIT? I know how to swim. You know how to swim? Yeah. Then why aren't you floating? <laughs> Treading water is different. From it's, swimming. it's just swimming little circles. Actually, so a question off of that. Uh, Mister, do you feel like there's anything you've kind of put off uh, during your time here that you look forward to getting back into? Like, I know for me, mm-hmm. I stopped playing saxophone. I stopped doing photography nearly as much. So, like, really excited to get back into that when I'm a normal adult. <laughs> Whatever the f- hell that means. Uh, <laughs> I censored myself. You guys should be happy for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I would have said exercise, except I'm actually trying to exercise now. Um, I think reading is a big one because mm-hmm. I used to read a lot. And I just, like, don't really have time to read anymore. I just have, like, a stack of books next to my desk that I don't read. Why don't you read, huh? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just like you made fun of me, why don't you work out, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, it's the same reason. <laughs> um, yeah, I think reading, what else? 
maybe some side hustles when I have a nine to five. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, are, we're especially where were where were you? Were you here? I was, yeah, I was here. You were you were in Seattle? No, I was in Boston. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said you were in Seattle. So you never hit me up. Okay. I remember being a freshman and looking at the seniors and thinking, oh, I'm never going to be there. That's that's fine. Like, that's so far away. But, like, all the seniors always told me, like, goes by really fast. And, like, holy shit. um, (laughs) Really does. (laughs) Really does. So, I mean, I finished my major this semester. And hopefully pass bio. And then all I have to do is take some ethics classes and then I'm out of here. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Which is... I don't know. Did you did you feel like the the time was too fast? Yeah, it's like isn't that there's there's this phrase that's like oh, I forget what it is. It's like the days go go by slowly, but the years go by quickly or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. Mm-hmm. Especially the frame of reference uh, with the time thing. Oh, it's like the the SpongeBob imagination. <laughs> what? Can you do that again? <laughs> imagination. <laughs> Frame of reference. <laughs> In your time at MIT, uh, what, are, what do you think have been some of your biggest lessons yeah. or, like, failures or learning experiences? Okay, so this is, like, the biggest one I say whenever people ask me this, but I think when I first came in, I actually wanted to be Course 15. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, nah, I should probably do something like math for engineering because, like, it's MIT, I guess, and everybody around you is doing it. Institute of Technology. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, uh, whatever, maybe I won't do it. So then I, like, tried to do course six <laughs> for, like, a semester. <laughs> or I like, took six triple one, which is, like, the intro class. Um, and I was like, nah, I really am not feeling this. And then I, like, changed around a bit. But I think if I'd, like, stayed in 15 and just, like, done what I wanted to, there probably would have been a lot less, like, struggle mm-hmm. or, like, internal struggle. Um, yeah, so I feel like from that, I also learned a lot about, like, just doing, I guess, what you feel, like, is right, instead of, like, comparing yourself endlessly to other people. Right. That trust in your gut. Yeah. I think that's been, like, the biggest thing that, like, with deciding to sign my offer, there was, like, I was debating between whether I wanted to go to grad school or not, and it just, in terms of signing the offer, it just, nothing felt wrong about it, so Mm -hmm. I was just... MIT has taught me that generally you should listen to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Um, f- lessons learned, failures. Well, I've had lots of failures here. <laughs> so many. I failed bio my freshman spring. Um, I, I learned that Ds get degrees twice. Um, so I got. You got a D? I've gotten two Ds here. Oh, what I got classes? a D junior fall and junior spring, both in signals. I should have learned the first time. Um, and I think there. With the signals classes, I was, uh, I could, I, I could envision a future of myself where I was, where I would be getting involved in signals research, especially in terms of like accessibility and stuff. And so I kept going for it, and even realize without without realizing and knowing, I suck at it. Like I just genuinely am horrible at it yeah. and don't enjoy it. And as a result, I ch- ch- pushed myself into something that like I was already hesitant about and barely made it out alive <laughs> i mean same actually because like i got c's in um i got c in six triple a one you got a c in six triple a one yes <laughs> first time i'm saying this publicly but mm-hmm. i got c in six triple a one okay. I got c- it's kind of embarrassing wait i got c in 1803 oh i got i got oh, I got c i got oh i got c's in uh, physics and in physics too oh my um, god i barely got a b in 1803 that that class was yeah rough. That, was, that was rough but yeah same thing where like i guess i tried to keep like pushing myself to do that kind of stuff even though i really like didn't like it because mm-hmm. um, like i took 18600 also which was a time but <laughs> <laughs> i gotta see yeah. in that class too <laughs> me too <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Sheffield is such a nice professor, but yeah. his exams were brutal. <laughs> yeah, I got a last season like transcript, but yeah, just like don't do things you don't want to, basically. Yeah, like my dad always tells me, if you do what you love, you're never gonna work a day in your life, and I feel like this is also something that people should think about more when they're in school, because like oftentimes you'll be pressured to do things because other people have this image of you, mm. or you think that this is this is the right way to do MIT. So if you're a frosh listening to this, or if you're a person who's going to be coming here, just just do what feels right, and you'll figure it out. Don't don't take a class just because you have to, or because okay, well, take classes that you have <laughs> to take, but if you don't like it, push it off. Um, but like. Just just do what feels right, and it'll be a lot easier. But fortunately, in a place like MIT, you can 
fuck up and pick yourself back up from it. I feel like that's, I feel like that's been like one of the most important lessons yeah. I've learned here is how to how to how to redirect. I feel like there's a lot of things at MIT, I guess, that like you can't. No, there's not a lot of things that you can't fix right. in terms of like. Yeah, I guess like for example, academics. Like if you're failing, you'll probably be fine. <laughs> as long as you like, don't do nothing. You know. Yeah, talk to the professor. Yeah. Professors give you an action plan. They yeah. say, here's how you get a D. I mean, I got like a 30 on two 801L tests freshman year. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we, I got my first bio yeah. exam back on Tuesday. Studied for quite a bit of time for it. I got a 55. <laughs> and they, they sent out the distributions of like the grades. And uh, I was in the 1% of people who got Ds. And Dude, got... I think, didn't you comment on the confessions post? Or yeah, I commented like... on the confessions post. I was like, freshman try hard. Stop. <laughs> Stop trying. Please. Yeah. As you can see, we're great at academics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're great at academics, as you can see. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah, we're great influences. You guys should definitely look up to us. Um. <laughs> <laughs> My freshman year was a very um, enriching experience, both academically and physically. And one day we were, um, I was hanging out with some of my friends at uh, Delts, uh, Delta Tau Delta, and we decided that we were going to walk back to Emmett campus because they're across the river in Boston. So we're walking back along the Esplanade, which is just a fancy name for the little park along the river, and someone got me on odds. So odds is a game where they say odds one in a hundred that you'll do X, Y, Z. And so they said, oh, it's one in 1,000 that you'll jump into the Charles River. Oh. And so <laughs> it's very easy. Those are, it's like the, the, the probability of saying the same number is one in 1,000, which is very low. So I <laughs> thought really hard, and I was like, okay, I'm ready. Three, two, <laughs> one. And guess what number I said? Just just, just try to guess the number. I don't know, 1,000? 1, 1,000? No, I said 69,000, which is not even in the range <laughs> of one to 1,000. <laughs> And so all the friends, were, all my friends are looking at me like, okay, you clearly have to jump in the river now because you not, you broke the rules of odds. And so I'm like, all right. So I'm just like, start walking back to the deck along the Esplanade, start taking my shirt off. I'm taking like my <laughs> shoes off. This person is looking over and they're like, what's happening over here? And I just eventually take my pants down to my underwear and I just jump right in. And I'm like, there, I did it. Are you happy? And everyone else is just looking at me. I don't know whether it's pity or whether I made it look fun. Everyone else just started taking their clothes off, too. <laughs> One of my best friends, Tommy, he was just, he was, like, down to his underwear in a second. I was like, that's pretty impressive. You know, maybe MIT taught you how to strip really fast. <laughs> One time, so my freshman year, I, um, I asked this uh, uh, French grad student out. <laughs> we had seen each what? other at a Halloween. We, we had seen each other at a Halloween party. I was dressed as the Pope, and she was dressed as Hermione. And so I was, I was just, we just, like... You know, getting jiggy with it, and <laughs> and then like I we met up later to like, to get food, and we're sitting there eating, and my hearing aids die, and I also have a really hard time with French accents. Like objectively, French right. is the worst language mm. because it just it you know it seriously it just like all wishes together like creamer and coffee, um, and so we're sitting there. I can barely understand her as it is. My hearing aids are dead, so I'm like fully deaf now. And so I'm just like reading, reading her lips. And so we're supposed to go to an improv show after. And so what happened was I was like, oh, yeah, uh, I left the tickets at home. I need to go, I need to go get them. So we went back to campus and I like grabbed the tickets when really I was just grabbing a hearing aid battery. Yeah. And then if I, later we, we checked into the show and I pulled the digital tickets up on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, didn't you forget those? And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I had to send myself the email. <laughs> but, yeah, okay, anything, I mean, no, is that, did that stir your imagination? No, I guess, okay, so there, there's this thing called da- data match, data match. Oh, data okay. <laughs> match, I remember. It's like. <laughs> 95%. Match. Yeah, so I guess it, like, started at Harvard, but they, like, brought it to MIT last year or whatever. So, like, it's like a survey, basically. Um, I don't know, they have a bunch of questions that are, like, I think one of them is, like, what do you, how do you pronounce birds? It's, ab- it's definitely birds. Yeah, birds. Um, but yeah, I guess I fill it out because like whatever, and then I think I matched with Godzilla. <laughs> we had, we were a ninety five percent match. Um, that was awkward. I was like, all right, not gonna message him. <laughs> yeah, I, I I did the I pressed the like back button, but she never did. So you know what can I say? Another one of my great successes here. <laughs> did, did you talk to any of the other matches? Yeah, I did. It was. I mean, nothing happened, obviously. It was really awkward. Yeah. We went to Abide. I really don't want to disclose, but like... Oh, Abide's the expensive boba. It might be a boba. bit too much disclosure, but like... 
I mean, they, they, I doubt coffee. they listen to this. We got coffee. Um, and, yeah, it was kind of just awkward conversation. He disclosed way too much. <laughs> <laughs> he told me his whole life story, basically. All right, basically. first date, I'm going to tell you everything. <laughs> I mean, it was, like, interesting, because, like, I like hearing about that stuff, but I was like, I don't know if I really, um... Feel that. Was it an MIT student? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's another one of the things that you need to learn about your MIT experience. We're awkward people. <laughs> like, sometimes we just have nothing to say. So you will really get your test in keeping a conversation going. That's that's something that comes, that's something else that comes with a diploma here. Um, <laughs> and is also one of the struggles about dating here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're seniors. We're still figuring it out, but we won't be here next year, which is just really weird and sad to think about. But it's yeah. also, like, really cool, but... I don't know. It went just as fast as high school. It's like I feel like it's like exciting, but it's also scary because it's like real world. It's just like whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like the one thing that scares me is like, I guess it's like you don't if you, I guess if you don't see people often, mm -hmm. you like could just not like see them ever. Right. You know. Yeah, staying in touch with everyone. Yeah. The thing I'm worried about is like there's a there's a very particular type of person at MIT. And I'm gonna miss being around MIT people. Mm. Like that, that was like this past summer. There was I was I was hardly with anyone from MIT, and like there's just like a certain like excitement and passion that people here bring when they talk about things or like do things mm. that I feel like it's hard to find out there. So I feel like that's what I'm probably gonna miss the most, the community. But yeah. Okay. Hope you enjoyed our episode. And I hope yeah. you enjoyed our ramblings and yeah. our sob stories and hopefully we'll have another episode next month with someone else who's <laughs> not us i'm gonzo i'm melissa bye <laughs> <laughs>